everybody. We're heading to uh, West Springfield. Try to catch that second rally. My uh, swing dance in um, Cambridge is canceled because the whole town is locked down. Musicians I know that need to play up in New Hampshire can't leave that area. No one can leave their homes because of this manhunt that's underway for the Boston Marathon uh, bombers, uh, one of which is dead and the other one's at large, according to news reports. Anyway, so my plans change. I hope I go to Springfield. Well, here we are. We're at the West Springfield exit. Well, I'm in a, I'm in independent press. Okay. But I won't claim that I'm not that's, biased that's like the rest of them do. Okay. You're just biased <laughs> in the right way. I'm biased in my own way. There you go. <laughs> fiercely, fiercely unbiased. Fiercely. Hey, can you guys hear me all right? Yeah! yeah. All right, good. Our next speaker, we got a few more speakers to go, is Blake Filippi. He is an attorney for the Tenth Amendment Center. Blake, come on up. Stay right, stay right. Hi, thank you, everyone. Uh, how many attorneys are out here? That's a problem. That's a real problem. All of us have taken an oath to the Constitution. It's an incredibly powerful position, and many attorneys don't use their position to better society. Last year, I, I tried to form an organization to, to, of attorneys to fight against the NDAA in my home state. Not one response. It was very disconcerting. But uh, a couple days ago, I was called by Stuart and Randy Swanson to try and lend a hand to, to Steve Redfern and his... 
rally on the Lexington Green, and I've reviewed the record, I've reviewed everything that the Lexington Board of Selectmen did, and I, I can unequivocally say that I think it's a gross constitutional violation, and we're going to fight this all the way, we're going to get a ruling that this is unconstitutional, whether it's through the state courts or the federal courts, and... that the reason this was denied, in my opinion, was based on the content of our message. That is strictly forbidden by the Constitution, and we're going to get that declared as such. So, I have a great law. I have a great law to protect our children. Why don't we mandate that every principal or their designee is required to have a handgun in a safe only opened by their palm print? We're worried about our children. Cowards like Adam Lanza sh shoot themselves in the head when the police show up and they have a fight on their hands. They will not go to a school and massacre unarmed children if they know they have a fight coming. That's a fact. They don't, they don't go to rape, they don't go to police stations. As to the national gun debate, I look at it through the law of proportionality. The point of the Second Amendment is to carry forth the truths stated in the Declaration of Independence, our ability to throw off a tyrannical regime. If the people are disarmed, our relation to government fundamentally changes. We are no longer its master. Right now, the government plans to have 30,000 drones in U.S. airspace by 2020, billions of bullets, the ability to use military law against us, the Patriot Act, the guns we have now are barely enough. And they want to limit our firearms in the face of that? It's ridiculous. At the same time, they're also giving F-16s and tanks to the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. It's hypocritical. It's ridiculous on its face. And I'm proud to stand with you wonderful people here today. So thank you. Thank God you. Bless. Really quickly, uh, our friend Steve Redford went into debt $3,900 to fight Lexington to get some of the greatest speakers here, like Larry Pratt, like Stuart Rhodes. I'm going to pass my tricorn hat. I'm going to put a I'm going to put a C note in here myself, and hopefully we can defray that a little bit today because Liberty's hanging on by a thread right now, and without people like Steve, you know, who shouldn't have to freaking sell the farm to get patriots together and top patriots, but that's the way it works. This stuff, this kind of event won't happen. So I'm going to pass the hat. Please be generous. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate that. And thanks in advance to everyone who's going to make contributions. It will be put, put to great use. Uh, before I introduce my next speaker, I want to uh, add something to my previous speech that I left out in haste, and I feel it's very important that it's not left out. Um, aside from Lexington derailing my rally, they actually reached out here across the state and attempted to derail this. Um, fortunately for us, there are law law enforcement officials who um, remember the oath they take and the oath they swore allegiance to. I want to thank uh, the West Side Police for standing by us and not opposing us, so let's get them a really large round of applause. Thank you. Okay, so my next speaker comes from Northeast Massachusetts. She's a very avid and active Second Amendment supporter, and I can say without a doubt, she understands American rights far better than our president right now. Bettina Romberg. Hi, everybody. Hello. I wanted to talk to you today about today, April 19th. And I wanted to ask you a very crucial, personal question. Does your life belong to you? Or does it belong to someone else? That question 
was at the heart of what happened on Lexington Green, where our ancestors stood on April 19, 1775. Before that day, the answer was always someone else. Whether to the king, to the pope, to society, or to the tribe, the individual lived and died by the benevolence or the edicts of others. Sometimes being killed in such numbers that the rulers could bathe in their blood. The men that stood there said no more. Our founding fathers instituted a new form of government, one that was unheard of before and is not fully understood even today. They devised a system that places power in the hands of the sovereign individual at the expense of the state. The individual, you, possess the unalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You are the master, and government is your servant, charged with the sole purpose to secure and protect your rights. That is what made the United States unique and the freedom of action by the sovereign individual is at the root of what made our country by far the most successful and greatest nation in the history of mankind. This respect for the individual and individual rights also made this the most moral country in history as everyone has equal rights under the law. Yes, there were contradictions and America paid a very high price for it with the Civil War. But the principal premises were clearly spelled out by the founders. The Founding Fathers were men with vision. They foresaw that persons at the helm of government would one day be tempted to infringe on the rights of individuals for whatever arbitrary range of the moment expediency or excuse. This is why the Founders insisted that the Bill of Rights be included in the Constitution and that these rights be clearly spelled out in no uncertain terms. Terms such as, Congress shall make no law, or, this one you guys know very well, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. no ambiguity here. It says, shall not be infringed, period. It does not say, it shall not be infringed unless some sick kid in Newtown goes berserk. The Bill of Rights is what makes the Constitution a limited republic not a democracy. In a democracy, individual rights may be taken by majority vote. In a limited republic, minority rights are unalienable. Not even the rights of the smallest minority, the individual, meaning nobody can take your rights away. them, deny they exist, even try to legislate them away. 
but they still exist. So what makes the right to keep and bear arms important enough to be included in the Bill of Rights? Two things make it important. First, there is good reason why Jefferson wrote in the Declaration of Independence that your first right is, to the, is the right to life, to your life, since without this right, no other rights are possible. To have the right to your own life means you have the right to the means to choose the direction of your life. You own your life. If you own your life, you have the right to the means to secure and protect it. The Second Amendment simply safeguards your right to the means necessary to protect your life in case of emergency. Second, and this one really annoys Washington, D.C., Beacon Hill, and we see in today's officials in Lexington. By knowing when one's rights are violated, the citizen may signify his or her displeasure. As the experiences of the American Revolution proved, the right to keep and bear arms serves as the ultimate check that the founders hoped would dissuade persons at the helm of state from seeking to establish tyranny. In hindsight, it would be difficult to quarrel with the success of the Founders' vision. Rights define and sanction your freedom to act in society. The freedom to pursue your goals so long as you do not violate the rights of other individuals. Look at it this way. Rights express your freedom of action in a social context. They are not mere permissions or licenses granted by the rulers. They are yours and cannot be infringed. Therefore, in a free society, firearms may only be used to defend yourself against physical force against criminals who intentionally initiate physical force to violate your rights because there is no legal basis for the government to act as a criminal and use physical force to take your firearms from you it resorts to a very old trick it changes the language and makes words mean something different than what they say. This is why we see firearms being called assault weapons, to which the government adds that private citizens don't need assault weapons. There is no such thing as assault weapons. The same firearm can be used to assault or to repel an assault for defense. Defenders of the right to own guns like you and me, we do not assault people. We want firearms for protection. The government uses this term to lump you with the criminals and their criminal intent and then to disarm you. High power, semi-automatic firearms with magazines that can hold more than 10 cartridges are equalizers that allow a good person to defend against multiple aggressors. Invasion is free people. We know it often.
often takes many gunshots to stop even a single aggressor. We stand here together, much like the men who stood on Lexington Green on this day 238 years ago. We know what's at stake. We know what our rights are. The only difference is that we do not have to again establish the foundations of the greatest nation ever. We already have it. is to ensure that it remains great and freedom is the essential ingredient. We only need to look to our neighbors south of the border to see the most recent example of what happens when firearms are outlawed. Law-abiding Mexicans cannot legally purchase firearms, yet all outlaws carry them. The result is 60,000 people murdered what are you shooting at? and tens of thousands more missing. Stand up and proudly tell our elected officials that the Founding Fathers were right. We the people are the master and government is the servant. Tell them we have unalienable rights and that it is their duty to protect them, not to violate them. If your life belongs to you, then you have the unalienable right to protect it. There was no room for compromise for those men who stood on Lexington Green today, 238 years ago, and there is no room for compromise now. Yeah.